So welcome. Today we're going to talk about trapping mice. It's October. Mice and rats, if you have those, are moving into your buildings, your outbuildings, your basement, your garage, your storage sheds, your feed bins, your bee houses, and your bee storage areas. So what I'm doing with this video is walking you through step by step how to build my mousetrap box that guarantees they go in and don't come out. Now this is a rat trap size right here. These are metal. They're made by a company called Made to Catch. And they're a little different than the Victor wooden mouse and rat traps because they have these teeth around them. They're stamped out of metal. They're going to last a very long time. Here's a really old one that's been out in the weather. They hold up and they come in different colors. Silver galvanized, the golden color you just saw, and this is called black burnished, which is the most expensive one. These rat traps are no joke. You will really injure yourself if these trigger on you. But what I'm showing is the trigger mechanism itself. See that copper piece in the middle there? This will not work as well in my mousetrap box, which keeps the trap shrouded. So when a mouse or a rat goes inside, your cat can't get to it, your dog can't get to it, and other animals other than your target animals don't get in and get snapped. Now I'm gonna be using these inside buildings for this demonstration. And we're going to go step by step how to build them. Look at this right here. These are the mousetrap sizes. So we're going to talk about the wood. And the reason I'm making this video is because people kept asking me, make a video on how to make it. So it's over 19 inches in length. I use scrap wood for this. The wood thickness doesn't really matter. So we're going to show you that. 19 inch length bottom boards. We're going to make two at once here or 48.26 centimeters. So we're going to cut this on the chop saw. We're going to cut two of them, of course, because we're going to make two. It takes just about the same amount of time as it does to make one. We're going to make it two and five-eighths of an inch wide, or 6.66 centimeters. And that's because we're building based on the size of the traps you're going to use. So if you're using these made-to-catch traps, this leaves you just enough play so that you can still place the traps and not have a problem. Next, we're going to build the side walls. So we use for the starting gauge of this, the thickness of your bottom board, and then just the arc of swing of the kill bar on your mousetrap right there. So then you mark it on the sidebar. So there we go, rough cut lumber. And leave a little space there. We want a mouse or a rat not to be able to jump over the kill bar when it moves. So 2.25 inches above the baseboard or 5.71 centimeters. So again, you just adapt it to whatever thickness bottom board you're using. You could use two by fours, for example. Here we are just verifying that we have plenty of space there. And uh, we'll go ahead and look at this. I chose another slab of wood that's different in thickness to show you that it doesn't matter. What matters is the interior space and those dimensions. Also, you can screw the traps down to the bottom, but I highly recommend you don't because you don't need to. And here we are, two and five eighths it looks like. So that's the width, which will accommodate these traps. These traps are cheap. They're about $2 a piece, or you can get a eight pack for $16.99 on Amazon. I'll put links down in the video description for your convenience. And now we have two of them. The wood is all chopped up, ready to go. And they're just laying in there to show the general placement of your traps. I like to put groups of four. And now we're gonna glue it up with Type On 2. Type On 2 has a pretty quick tack, so you can push your pieces of wood together and uh, they tack up nice, and then you can clamp them, and then you can come back later and put screws in them. I'm gonna show you all of those steps. So here we go. I like to do it right on the concrete floor inside my garage, and that way it's nice and flush, and I'm gonna clamp two of them together at the same time. And the wood doesn't have to be perfect. These traps don't have to be perfect. All you're doing is creating a shroud for your metal or wooden mouse or rat trap. So if it's a rat trap, you just scale up the dimensions and follow the same procedure here. I'm going to use these DeWalt clamps. And let me tell you what, these are very stout. So I'm just going to clamp it up with glue long enough, a couple of hours to make it hold so that I can put screws in it. And you can bypass that, of course, and just put screws in. And also the good news here, tight bond cleans up with water. So now here they are. And the other thing is you want to make sure and look at the ends there. Now, while those are clamped up and gluing, I'm going to go ahead and make the end pieces. And I'm using a Forstner bit here. 
and we're doing an inch and a half in diameter. So if you don't have one and you buy one, an inch and a half is great. Mice and rats can go in through that and you can use it for making your bluebird houses if you want to because those entrances are also an inch and a half in diameter. Now I'm using two by four stock here and I want that opening to come right into that box at floor level. So all I did was mark off the thickness of the wood of the baseboards and you will too. I also mark off and drill all of the holes because there's four total because we're making two of them. So I drill the holes first before cutting into smaller pieces. It just makes it easier to manage that way. Inch and a half hole, inch and a half thick material because it's a two by four. There you go. Just gonna drill some more of those. Got to do a slow motion sequence. In slow motion, I can see that my drill chuck actually moves quite a bit. Anyway, we're all done. Let's cut those pieces. Just cut right on that center line there. Again, they're going to be wider than the box, and that's fine because this will add stability to your mousetrap box. There we go. So I already put stainless steel screws in these through the sides, pre-drill them because that's oak on the sides there. You don't want to split your wood. Have some pride in your craftsmanship there. You don't want stuff to split and come apart. So we're also going to pre-drill the end pieces. But we're going to glue them up and clamp them first, just like we did the sides. So I like to glue and clamp before I put the screw holes through. And this way we can check it. Look at that. Mouse or rat is going to come right through there. In this case, though, this is a mouse trap box. And the theory is that when we put these things together, any mouse or vole or whatever your target species is, when they go into this, they can't avoid the traps. So really baiting the traps themselves isn't so critical as putting a food resource in there that they want to get to. So then they go in and walk over the traps and that's what triggers them. That's also why I like to put in multiple traps instead of just a single one. Now these holes make this box appealing to mice. They naturally seek out hidden spaces, cavities, and things like that. And you can put this along the wall and they'll naturally investigate it on their own. And then you just put black oil sunflower seeds in here. And voila, you've got a box that they want to check out. And once they go in, as you saw in the opening sequence of this video, they really don't come back out. Also, the hole serves to keep the trap in there. So if you had an animal that was not completely killed, they can't run away with your trap, so it'll still be in there. Now we're all done. It's been a couple of hours, and the end pieces are on. We're just going to take these clamps off, and then we're going to drill them out and put some deck screws now on the ends. There's the bottom. These things will last many years, especially if they're inside, but they also work in your garden or places like that if you've got problems. And now we'll just drill it out. The pine that the 2x4 is made of is not such a problem, but we're close to the end, so I don't want to split it out there. And these are these heavy deck screws. They're over 3 inches long. And they're self-tapping. Notice the cutting leading edge there. They come with their own bit for your drill. So now we're screwed and glued. If you want to put some kind of identifier or name on there, that's fine too. But it's 22 inches long with the 2x4 end pieces, and you'll notice that they stick up a little higher than the side walls. Why would it do that? Well, we're going to cut the roof for it, and I'm going to show you that in a second. Be very careful, of course, hearing protection, eye protection, and don't let your hand get close to these blades. These are Diablo blades that I like to use. Always use a guide or something to push the wood through. Don't play games with your hands. Nice thick slabs of wood that a friend brought over and gave to me. So here we go. The width is five inches. They're both the same.
and these are your tops. See, this is very easy. If you if you know basic woodworking, you'll be able to build these, and you scale them again according to the size of the traps you're going to use. Now, notice the gap on the side. The ends actually raise the board, the cover, a little bit, and that's because we want those mice to smell the food inside there, but not be able to get in through the side. We want them to go through this hole. And when they get in there, they're going to see a row of traps. And then they're going to step on these wide trigger plates. And again, you don't have to put bait on the trigger plate. I've been doing this for many years. In fact, I'll put a link down to my original box of certain death. And you'll be able to see how I did those. I did rat traps and mouse traps. And uh, people were upset that I used so much dramatic music through that video. And I stagger them. The other thing is, the way I'm showing it set up here is backwards. I actually want to face the trigger plates towards one another. You also put a little teaser food out there. And we're going to be putting this in my observation beehive building, which right now is being visited by too many mice, to be honest. So we got to get them. And we're going to use this box. I don't like glue traps. I don't like anything that's going to let them suffer. If you're going to kill mice or rats, make sure you put something together that will, in fact, kill them. There's no reason letting them suffer. People put live catch traps out and they forget the trap is out there. And then they've got an animal that just starved to death. So here they are in place. There are two of them in the same building. And when you put four traps in there, you can catch multiple mice at one time. Some people say mice and rats smell death. So if one's in there and it's dead, you're done. That's not true. When there's a dead mouse in there, guess what the other mice do? Come right in and walk right over the top of them. And here's what I'm showing you with the trigger plates facing each other. That way, if a mouse gets in here and tries to jump over the traps, they land on the very next trigger plate, and off it goes. And most mice trigger, trigger more than one trap when they visit this box. You can even put this inside a chicken coop, for example, because the chickens can't get to it. So it's a great way to trap your problemed rodents. Now we're back. It's been an overnight. See lots of rat dropping and mouse droppings here open it up and see if we were successful and of course we were we got three mice in one night in the same trap that's how it's supposed to work now what do we do with the mice afterwards we don't just throw them away let's recycle them we're gonna toss them out in this field next to the wood line and we're gonna see what comes to eat them now you can do this with your trapped animals once they're dead there's no reason just throwing them in the garbage Put him out for wildlife, and here comes the fox. He's kind of picky. Sorting through him, deciding which one he's going to eat first. He even gives one a little flick here. He came through at about 11 o'clock at night. There he tossed one of them off to the side. And he partially eats one. Now, fox will cache their food. In other words, they'll run off with them and go stuff them in holes, bury them and things like that, and then they come back and get them later. This fox made a mistake. He ran away with one of the mice, thinking it's gonna come back later, but in the meantime, a skunk came through and took it. Now the fox doesn't have anything to get. And he even marks the spot here a little bit. Watch right there, marking, and off he goes. So that's it. That's how you build a mouse trap box of certain death. Set it up. If you're really gonna trap mice, do it this way. It's a guaranteed kill. Works all the time. But remember, there's always more mice out there. And if they're outside, that's fine. But when they come into your spaces, the basement, the attic, your bee shed, you might have to set out mouse traps. Thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful.